I want to know their stories and I want to listen. And, uh, uh, and, I, think and I, I think their stories are important for everybody to hear. Um, because they don't, you know, they're kind of nameless, you know, and they're certainly voiceless, and uh, it shouldn't be that way. You know, I, I don't know how to solve the problems, but I think if people knew more about it, maybe somebody smarter than me can figure that out. Um, you know, I, I, but I just think, you know, these stories should be told. I've been called it a chronic alcoholic, a drunk. A bum. But I come back here. Because it's like my home. You know? You ain't got nothing else. In 1994, I was doing a story on the Boston Common. And I met a homeless guy there, um, Bert Lewis. He told me he was the mayor of Boston Common. He became a sort of a central part of this feature story I was doing on Boston Common. And a couple months later, I, I was walking through the common and saw him, and he had sort of transformed himself. He had uh, detoxed, he was off alcohol, and he was at the veteran shelter working as a security guard. And it was like this amazing transformation. And so I, I, at that point, I, you know, I, I did a story with him, uh, followed him over the course of a year as he, uh, dealt with his sobriety and got a, uh, an apartment. And then I just, you know, there were just all these stories out there that I felt like people didn't hear about. We're a couple. We take care of each other. He takes care of me, I take care of him. We have a bond that we stay together. Louis and Donna. I met them, I did a documentary for WGBH um, and, and they were one of the stories I told and they lived at the corner of Molina Cass Boulevard and Mass Ave in a tent. And so by the end of the documentary they were off the street and trying to make it in New Hampshire where her family lived. And they had a lot of struggles and a lot of ups and downs and they would take one step forward and then two steps back. Um, and so I followed them over the course of four and a half years uh, through all kinds of stuff. And, um, and that was the story, you know, it was, um, you know, Louis and Donna. I'm dying to get my own place, dying to live normal. I'm dying that I don't have to wake up the crack of dawn and look for a bathroom to go to or somewhere to wash up. Uh, where am I going to get clean clothes today? You know, I'm not that much into the streets. That I mean, I'm on the streets because I have no choice right now. With Jean Day, I met her at. Uh, uh, the McGinnis House, with his, which is the health care, Boston's Healthcare for the Homeless respite. And I was there just meeting and talking with people. And, you know, because I have continued to cover and, and tell stories from the streets since I met Bert Lewis. And, um, and so I talked with Jean, who was in there, had gone through detox uh, for alcohol, and um, she was really articulate. And, so I came back and talked to her again, and then you know she told me where she hung out on the street, where she lived on the street, and I started to, to follow her and um, and and to talk to her and to tell her story. And um, she, you know, for someone to open up their lives to you and to open up their lives, uh, lives that are fractured and a lot there's a lot of mess to it is an incredibly brave thing. And, um, but she thought, she felt like I feel that people should know about this and, and you, you know, and know about the reasons and, uh, that she's there, know what life is like on the street, what life is like uh, being an alcoholic, you know, the struggle that, that, that she goes through. Um, and then, you know, she got a place. And, and you know, and it, 
and when you get a place, it's not everything is rainbows and unicorns. It's, uh, you know, you still have to work on things. And so she continues to work on things, it, it, along with Angela. They're still together, her boyfriend. Hey, I never said I was beautiful. I know I got a heart of gold. I've been searching for a heart of gold. No, we're very happy. Happy, happy. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. <laughs> <laughs> we even danced a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have. Two goofballs. <laughs> the only arguments we got is about her drinking, that's it. There you go. Because I guess I change my personality when I drink. She does. Total different person. Well, I do drink, I'm not going to lie. But... Not like I drank, you know? And hopefully that will come to, I don't know if it will ever come to a complete stop, but it's gonna slow down more and more. When I'm trying to tell someone's story, I want the story to sort of dictate how it's told. And um, that's number one. And number two is to just to listen to people. So maybe that allows for more stillness to it because um, I'm not you know I don't ask them to do anything all I'm doing is just can I be with you and and you know in certain times can we talk but that's you know I'm just sort of uh, in the sidecar of their life you know moving along and whatever happens happens and I try to keep keep up